Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, I am Naveed Ahmed, Senior Subject Specialist English at Brunel Public School and Inter College Sahiba. I shall be teaching you English. Let's start our lesson. Today we'll learn chapter number two, Chinese New Year, and we'll do exercises. In exercises, we will do glossary, then vocabulary, then reading comprehension, and then we'll move to collective nouns, use of must and mustn't, use of present indefinite and present continuous tenses, and then we'll move to punctuation, then use of hyphen, and at the end, we learn primary and secondary stress. Let's start our lesson. First of all, glossary. As you all know, glossary means difficult words and their meanings. In glossary, the first word we have is associ association. Association in English means relation. Or Urdu mein hum kehte hain taluk. I hope you might have learned these word meanings while reading the translation. Second word is celebration. Celebration means a party, a function. Urdu mein hum kehte hain takreeb. Next word is customary. Customary means usual. Yani rawaj ke mutabik. Next word is gatherings. Gatherings mean crowd crowd of people logon ka ijtema then we have the word lunar 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 means related to moon urdu mein hum isko kehte hain kamri next word is partake in english partake means take part kisi cheez mein shmooliyat ikhtiyar karna hissa lena wagaira wagaira and then we have the word recipient recipient is receiver wasool kuninda hasil karne wala next word is reinvigorate it means strengthen aur urdu mein hum isko kehte tarotaza karna apne aap ko and then we have the word symbolize symbolize means represent kisi cheez ki ilamat hona numaindagi karna wagaira and the last word is traits Traits means qualities, Urdu mein khususiyat. Our next exercise is that of vocabulary. Exercise A, the first word is gathering. The synonym of gathering is crowd or assembly. Next is customary. We just have read its meaning in Urdu also. Customary means usual. Then we have the word thoroughly. Thoroughly means perfectly, completely. The next word is commonplace. Commonplace means a routine work or something that is very common. Partake is take part. We just have read it. And next word is traits. Traits means qualities. Reinvigorate means refresh or strengthen. Our next exercise is formation of nouns. As you know, we can make nouns from verbs, nouns from adjectives, nouns from other words. For example, here is a word celebrate. Celebrate is verb. When we make its noun, we make the word celebration. This shows that we use certain words like Asian or meant or it or ing or ism or ness. We add these words at the end of the word and we get the noun. Let's do the exercise. <clears throat> First word is gather. Can you guess its noun? Yes, you are right gathering next word is symbolic and symbolic 
from symbolic we can make its noun symbolism next is prosper can you guess yes the word is prosperity next word is decorate and from decorate we can make the noun decoration next word is encourage and if we add m e n t into it we get the word encouragement <clears throat> next is the reading comprehension and we have the question choose the correct options first question is chinese new year falls somewhere and the options are on january 21st b on february 20th and c between january 21st and february 20th if you have read the lesson carefully you might be knowing that the third option c is the correct answer next question is paragraph number 1 gives a general details of festivals b specific details of chinese new year and c general details of new year celebrations if you read the paragraph number 1 carefully you will know that option b is correct specific details of chinese new year third question is it is customary for families to thoroughly clean their houses option a is before the first day of the new year b is on the first day of the new year and option c is on the second day of new year and the correct answer is before the first day of the new year next question is hanging up signs and posters on doors and windows means option a is love and sincerity option b is care and affection and option c is luck and happiness yes the third option option c is correct luck and happiness last question is envelopes are not to be opened until option a the giver has left the home of the recipient option b is the recipient has left the home of the giver and option c is the giver has gone to sleep and the correct answer is uh, option b the recipient has left the home of the giver next is collective nouns do you know what a collective noun is it is a noun that represents a group of individuals for example assembly family team etc etc the collective noun is usually treated as singular but the collective noun police is treated as plural for example the police is chasing the thief this is incorrect sentence and the police are chasing the thief this is correct sentence now let's do the exercise on page 21 first sentence on page 21 is it is typical for a chinese dash to make eight to nine dishes for the new year's eve dinner the correct answer is family second is the dash applauded heartily at the end of the concert and answer is audience third sentence is the dash has just had a physics lesson and the answer is the class has just had a physical lesson physics lesson sentence number 4 is the dash of robbers was arrested by the police and the answer is the gang of robbers sentence number 5 is a dash of people gathered at the accident site its answer is a crowd of people gathered Sentence number 6 is the dash took many important decisions at its monthly meeting and the answer is the committee 
took many important decisions at its monthly meeting the last sentence is the dash of pakistan air force looked smart in their uniform correct answer is the crew of pakistan air force crew means the staff next is the use of must and mustn't as you know must is used for strong obligation when we have to say something with force and mustn't is used for strong prohibition when we have to stop someone very strongly and one thing more the pronunciation of mustn't can be it the word can be pronounced two ways mustn't or mustn't mustn't is also correct and mustn't is also correct let's move to the next exercise b use of must and mustn't the first sentence is she dash eat so much sugar she mustn't eat so much sugar sentence number 2 student dash pass an entrance examination to study at this school and the answer is the students must pass an entrance examination sentence number 3 is you dash watch so much television and the answer is you mustn't watch so much television sentence number 4 is he dash take some medicine for that cough and answer is he must take some medicine for that cough last sentence is visitors dash smoke and the answer is visitors mustn't smoke next exercise is related to the use of present indefinite and present continuous tense when we make a sentence in present indefinite tense we use subject first form of the verb and object and if the subject is he she it or any single noun then we add s or es in the verb first form of the verb this is present indefinite tense and for present continuous tense we use first subject then we use is am or are then we use ing with the first form of the verb and then object let's come to the exercise exercise c first sentence is you not like chocolate the answer is you do not like chocolate where do we use present continuous tense present continuous tense is used when the function is going on when the action is in progress and we know through some words like now at the moment like that we know that this is present continuous tense second question second sentence is she not study at the moment the quest the correct answer is she is not studying at the moment third sentence is they not eat rice every day the correct answer is they do not eat rice every day sentence number 4 is we not work now now the word now has come here now means at this moment at this moment of time so we should use present continuous tense here we are not working now fifth sentence is it rain a lot here and the correct answer is it rains a lot here last sentence is i go on holiday tomorrow and the correct answer is i am going on holiday tomorrow next exercise is related to punctuation if you open your books on page 22 i will tell you where to make corrections <coughs> excuse me in the very first sentence on the eve on should be used with capital o on 
then we have the words chinese new year their first letters should be capital chinese new year and there should be a comma after the word chinese new year and next is the sentence ends at the word served and it should be followed by a full stop next word is it which should have capital letter then again the word chinese comes with small letter just capitalize this letter and then we have the word new year eve dinner all the starting letters should be capital and then the paragraph ends at long lasting there should be a full stop next is correct use of hyphen hyphen is a short dash which is used when you are writing something on the paper and the space finishes at the end of the line but the word is still left so where to use that dash that is very important let us see <coughs> first rule is divide the word between syllables now the question arises what a syllable is when we speak a word we break it into different parts these parts are the syllables of the word for example the word delay is divided into these two parts d and lay when we speak it we say delay we make two parts out of it so it has two syllables the short words cannot be divided they are called one syllabic words and in the same way there are two syllabic words three syllabic words four syllabic words etc the first rule is divide the word between the syllables put the hyphen on the syllable now if you look at this word s this is not syllable and second the this is not also syllable support has two syllables sup and port support so we have divided it between the syllables this is the correct answer the next rule is the hyphen goes at the end of the first line if you look at this example in this example the hyphen has been put on the second line that is incorrect the correct form is this one third rule is if the word has prefixes or suffixes then they are natural divisions we should write prefix or suffix on the first line and rest of the word should be taken to the next line examples are before you this is incorrect form and this inter and national this is correct form next is the next rule is do not divide proper nouns and proper adjectives if there are, there are words that are proper nouns like pakistan kashmir china they should not be divided by hyphen and in the same way pakistani kashmiri chinese these word are proper adjectives they cannot also be divided into hyphens next rule is there should be at least two letters plus the hyphen on the first line and three letters on the second example is before you this is incorrect here we have only one letter in the first line here we have only two letters in the second line this is also incorrect so this word supposedly supposedly this is correct next rule is 
divide hyphenated words using the hyphen already in the word if the words have already hyphens in them then do not put an extra hyphen on them if you look at this this is incorrect and mother in law this is correct next is primary and secondary stress now here the question arises what is stress as i already told you in the previous exercise when we speak a word that has more than one syllables we break it into syllables or parts out of these syllables one syllable is pronounced a bit more forcefully than others this is called primary stress primary stress is shown by the symbol this one which you are watching this symbol the syllable which is spoken less forcefully is called having secondary stress secondary stress is shown by the symbol this one which you are watching for example the word pronunciation here it is written in phonetic alphabets you can see pronunciation 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 we have the primary stress here ation and secondary stress we have here none so we'll pronounce it pronunciation 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 so the last syllable ation will be stressed now let's move to exercise f look at the page 24 they have given a page from dictionary and they have given the stress and intonation pattern also i have selected some words from this page if you look at them carefully you will see that primary and secondary stresses are shown this word is messianic this is primary stress anic and here is secondary stress messianic say with me messianic second word is mestiza here is the primary stress mestiza third word is metallic say with me metallic the primary stress is here on talic metallic next word is here have we have pronunciation of this word this syllable is stressed and this is this is primary stress and this is secondary stress metalliferous say with me metalliferous metalliferous next word is if you read it it is metamorphic metamorphic here we have primary stress and here we have secondary stress this part will be spoken less forcefully and the part which has primary stress it will be spoken a little bit more forcefully metamorphic metamorphic next word is metamorphose metamorphose here we have primary stress here and secondary stress is in the beginning so 
this part will be given stress metamorphose metamorphose this is all for today i hope you have understood it thank you very much